to my channel. I just got back from seeing Briar and the Last Dragon and I absolutely loved it. I'm going to do a non-spoiler review today, but I will do a spoiler review later because there is a lot to talk about. Ryan and the Last Dragon is legitimately the best movie that Disney has done since Frozen, and I think the reason for this is because of Jennifer Lee. Although she is not involved directly in the film, under her leadership, Disney is going in such an exciting direction. The writers Queek Wynn and Adele Lim have written the script with great pacing. The story moves very fast, but you always know what is going on. That is no small feat, as this movie features many different locations and characters. They also deliver some emotional moments that really hit you. I cried twice and I never cry. Unlike most Disney movies, Ryan the Last Dragon isn't a musical, but I didn't miss the songs at all. In fact, the lack of songs actually gives the movie more time to develop the plot. However, there is a tiny singing moment towards the beginning of the film, which references the musical history of the Disney princess, specifically Rapunzel. The movie also made great use of flashbacks in both 2D and 3D animation. There was a particularly strong flashback towards the end of the movie, which I will be discussing in my spoiler review. Predictably, the animation was a amazing. The five lands are incredibly detailed and every single background character is fully realised. The animation is even more impressive when you consider that this film was made remotely in over 400 different homes. But what really makes the animation in Raya unique are the fight sequences. I am the type of person who tends to get bored during action sequences, but the ones in this movie were incredibly engaging, even better than Mulan. On to the characters, I absolutely loved the three female leads in this film. I honestly don't know which one's my favourite because they were all so great. Raya's character was extremely compelling. She is definitely the most jaded Disney princess we have seen, and I loved how she was a realist instead of an optimist. On top of not having a love interest, she also states that she's never having kids and nobody questions it. It was amazing. I don't want kids either and it meant so much to me that Disney let a princess say that. I love how Disney is telling girls there is no one way to be a woman. Kelly Marie Tran does a great job at voicing her, really having to portray a broad range of emotions. She also voiced the younger version of the character giving greater consistency to the performance. Aquafina as Sisu is absolutely hilarious and also manages to carry some very emotional moments. Everyone is comparing her performance to Robin Williams as the genie and that is absolutely correct because she is just as good. However, she does have a little bit of Josh Gad's Olaf in her due to her optimism and naive nature. She provides a great contrast to Raya and the dynamic between them works really well. Now I can't say a lot about Namari because she is a walking spoiler but I will say she is my favourite Disney antagonist now. We spend a fair bit of time with her character and you really come to understand the justification for her actions. She is very similar to Cass from Tangled the Series and Catra from She-Ra and those two are my favourite characters. Gemma Chan does an amazing job. It is totally different to her live action roles and you can't tell it's her. She embodies the character. Her relationship with Raya was very compelling. Normally in hero and villain situations, the hero is really nice and the villain is really angry, but here both girls have equal anger and hatred towards each other, which I think is more accurate to how conflicts play out in real life. There are a lot of other cool characters, but I want to give a special shout out to Tuk Tuk and Boon. Tuk Tuk is just an icon, and he was so cute every time he was on screen. Boon was my favourite extra member of Raya's crew. He was really funny, and I loved his backstory. The climax and ending of the film was completely unexpected. I did not predict it in any of my videos. Seriously, don't let anyone spoil it for you because it is amazing. But I will say that the movie's end message will really resonate with people due to the events of 2020. Additionally, the ending really sets up a potential sequel or Disney Plus series. So in conclusion, I have decided to give Raya and the Last Dragon a score of 10 out of 10. It is well worth the $30. You will not be disappointed. That is it for today. Like this video if you liked it and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now and have a magical day.